The Alien franchise has a very clear and huge influence in modern sci-fi horror and action cinema. It has also no doubt become a huge popular icon and an insanely dedicated fan base, and rightfully so, because the first two films in the series define the way many filmmakers craft sci-fi horror and action today. But the film series also had an unfortunate curse of giving us two mediocre alien films and also followed by two awful cinematic crossovers with another alien monster franchise, The Predators. But thankfully, Aliens fans were given a new sort of spin-off movie last year, directed by the man who made the original sci-fi horror masterpiece. Alright, since I'm going to be reviewing 5 movies in this review, I'm going to go through each movie and their presentation quality as fast as I can. So let's start with Ridley Scott's Alien. Simply put, this is still one of the best sci-fi horror films ever made. Ridley Scott paces the film masterfully, slowly building up the alien presence until the final hour. And what was unique about this film compared to other slasher flicks is that this movie focuses more on suspense than guts and gore. The circumstances of characters' deaths are mostly implied and not explicitly shown, which makes it even more disturbing because you're left to your imagination as to what happened to them. There's one technique that Ridley Scott used to make the alien scarier, and that is never to show the alien puppet in whole, and it works perfectly. Of course, since this is basically Jaws in space as pitched by the writers, you'll know that most of the main characters are going to die, but you will never know what exactly is going to happen, even after multiple views, because it is deliberately slow and keeps your heart pumping anticipating what's going to happen next. Hmm, perhaps a little bit too slow by today's standards. Yes, this movie is a much slower paced movie especially compared to today's horror films, even Prometheus. And as a result, Alien will not have the repeat viewing value of its sequel Aliens, but its slow pacing is exactly what makes it so scary. So when you watch it, I will guarantee it's a movie experience you will never forget. Firing, God damn it. Yeah. If Alien is a master of horror and suspense, James Cameron's Aliens is a master of guns blazing badass sci-fi action. This is my personal favourite of the entire series. This is the movie that influenced many sci-fi action movies and video games to come, in terms of its sci-fi weapon design and the concept of space marines. Think Starship Troopers, Gears of War, Resistance, Halo. Especially Halo. Does this look familiar? Now move it, people! Alright, sweethearts, you heard the man and you know the drill. Assholes and elbows. Hudson, come here. Come here. Man, your eyes down range, fingers on your triggers, and we all go home in one piece. Am I right, Marie? Sir, yes, sir! Mm hmm Damn right I am. Now move it out! Double time! Even James Cameron's own avatar recycles some of these movies' themes. This film also expands on the lore and the culture of the aliens, and whereas Alien 1 shows what a single one of these creatures can do to an entire crew of a ship, Aliens show what a freaking horde of them can do to a squad of colonial marines armed with the iconic pulse rifle. It makes you wish that they had made a canon video game sequel to the film and be the badass colonial marines yourself. Oh wait, you get alien colonial marines. Damn it, they f I think one of the reasons some people like this film more than the original other than it being more action packed, is that the characters in this movie are more memorable. Even though sometimes they are a bit stereotypical, unlike the first film, in which the characters are just regular, normal, all mine workers, which are just not as interesting. But maybe that's the appeal of the original Alien, is that the characters are not soldiers, they are just normal, tired workers who are mostly unarmed, which makes the singular Alien threat more menacing. But for me, I like characters like Sergeant Apon. Hudson, Vasquez, Hicks, Remember short controlled bursts. and even the new android Bishop, which is said to be an improved version of the android Ash in the original. This is my favourite James Cameron film, and yes, I like it even more than Terminator 2. If you want to see some badass marine on alien action, this is the movie for you. If you don't want to. Just stay away from me, Bishop. You got that straight? Then comes the train wreck to the franchise known as Alien 3. This movie, pardon the pun, alienates alien fans and kills off the main characters in the second film, and Ripley crashes into the facility called Fury 161. 
And an alien egg, of course, stows away on the ship, creating another alien menace. This movie had a constant nihilistic theme throughout, that everything they try to do to stop the aliens in is, is entirely pointless, and it's just and it's just constantly dark and broody. This movie is not fun at all. It's not even anywhere nearly as thrilling as the first film or as action packed as the second one, and the story barely holds together. Some great ideas like the religious undertones or the story allusions to fighting something inevitable like death are buried deep down in this mess of a film, but you're gonna have to dig deeper than you normally want to, and endure this film's uneven script and unlikable tone in order to squeeze these themes out of the movie. Now, I'm completely aware that this movie had a problematic and troubled production. That first time big budget director David Fincher has to start shooting without a finished script and had to endure constant interference from the producers of 20th Century Fox and then he finally gave up and abandoned the film during the editing stage. It's very hard for a first time director to go through this kind of hell during production and I think the problems show in this film. Some say that even if this movie is a mess, it is an interesting and sometimes beautiful mess but for me, I beg to differ. I don't find this mess interesting because of its bleak and depressing tone that makes it not fun to watch. Well, your opinion may vary, but this is my least favourite movie of the Alien series. What is the Alien film that is an interesting mess for me is Alien Resurrection. Yeah, this is not exactly a good alien movie either, but I find its badness interesting because of some of its goofy moments, intentional or not, and quirky characters like the General Paris or the Doctor played by Brad Dorif. It is also not a dark and depressing movie like Alien 3 was. This movie was directed by the French director Jean-Pierre Jeunet, who also directed Amélie, and was written by Josh Whedon, who wrote and directed The Avengers. And like The Avengers, this movie had moments that poke fun at it itself. And while it is entertaining, I also think that those are the moments that don't work. There are also quite a few plot holes and inconsistency with the other films, like how the Ripley clone can pull off a face hugger so easily when it's established in a franchise that once those creatures get on your face, they never get off. And what is this implied lesbianism with the Ripley clone and core? It makes no sense and has nothing to do with the story, but I guess it gives viewers reason to make fun of it. That said, the movie has some interesting visual design and cinematography, and you can see that Jean-Pierre Jeunet tries to bring some sort of vision to the dying franchise. But it's also marked by a script that's more interested in making fun of itself than being a canon story. That is hard to take this film seriously as a legitimate entry to the Alien series. Remember that spaceship that you saw on LV-426 in the original Alien? And what was the creature that seemed to be chestbuster on the ship? Well, that's what the film Prometheus explore. Back at the hand of the director who made the original Alien so thrilling, Prometheus was intended to be a prequel to Alien, but Ridley Scott decided that it would be best for the film to go for a different direction, since the Alien is so overused now that it's not as scary as it used to be. Instead, Prometheus explored the original of the space jockey Alien that we saw in the original film. Here they are referred to as the engineers, and our main heroes find out that these creatures created men. They engineered us. And we set off to find our creators, which leads them to a planet called LV-223. On the planet, they discover some alien artifacts, but they discover that there are other creatures still alive on the planet. And then obviously things take a turn for the worse for them. Well, I thought this movie was alright. It brings back the suspenseful atmosphere that was missing from the Aliens film since the third one. Still, I feel this film could have been even better than it is if the script had a bit more polish. There are some plot holes here and there, and other than the android David, which was the film's most interesting character, most of the other characters feel a bit flat, and there's just and they are just seen to be there to be cannon fodder. And the film also so ends on a sort of a cliffhanger, which is a bit less satisfying than I ever hoped. But I think this film still manages to bring something new and fresh to the Alien franchise and not just rehash the Alien again, while keeping to the core of what made Alien suspenseful and thrilling to begin with. And it does it really well. And that's what I think is the most important thing that the film manages to achieve. It is a good film, but just as not as great as the original Alien. Now onto the video quality. Alien's video transfer is mastered from a new 4K scan and it has never looked better. 
Sure, it doesn't have the clean digital look of Prometheus, but this video transfer creates the filmic presentation as intended. There's film grain, but every frame looks sharp from the high resolution film scan. Colours are vivid, especially like the chest burster scene with the bright red blood. And I did not spot any distracting softness or artifacts to the image. Alien's video transfer might be a bit divisive because it has went through a degrading and DNR and correct color correction process under the supervision of James Cameron. And Cameron himself said it looks amazing. Well, from what I've seen, it really does, but I will also say that Alien purists might nitpick that the color looks a bit different from the DVD version. It looks slightly less purplish than the DVD. But other than the new color correction, it looks fine. Some scenes still have grain, but I feel it's important that there must be some film grain present to give that filmic look and the video transfer managed to maintain that filmic look throughout. As for the DNR process, I did not spot any of those distracting waxy human faces effect. If there is, I didn't see it and it didn't detract from my experience. Apart from being my least favourite of the Alien films, Alien 3 transfer also looks quite disappointing. It's not a bad transfer by any means, it looks decent, but the overall image looks soft, je colours generally look desaturated, Although the colour scheme is intentional given the visual and overall tone of the movie and you can tell that the transfer does not have the same meticulous care that the previous two films had. But that said, it is at least an upgrade from the DVD version. Alien Resurrection fares marginally better, colours looks brighter and the cinematography have good high contrast lighting. There's natural film grain also. It is also unfortunate that most of the image looks softer than it would have liked. But otherwise, it's a fairly good transfer. I think I probably like this transfer a little bit more than Alien 3 because I find that Alien Resurrection had a better date and distinct visual style. It is at least a good looking film. But you can also tell that the transfer is not as great as the ones for the first two Alien movies. Only the discs for Alien 1 and 2 are THX certified by the way. But the best video transfer of the bunch is clearly Prometheus. Since it was shot digitally in 3D, the video transfer is directly from the digital source. This transfer is demo quality. Everything looks really crisp. And it is also aided by the fact that Ridley Scott shot this film really well, with great lighting that evokes the mood of the original Alien. There are no more words that I can really say to describe it, otherwise I'm just going to be repeating myself. But I will just tell you to go and see it for yourself. There is nothing in the desert, and no man needs nothing. What was that? Just something from a film I like. Alien had a really good sound mix remix for 5.1, but also some of its sound design is starting to show its age. But there are still some great bass moments like when an Nostromo is attempting to land on LV426. Dialogue is clear for the most part, but because of the older recording equipment, occasionally they sound distorted, but you can still hear what they're saying. They certainly did some work to get the film to sound better than before. So overall, the sound mix is good, but it will probably not blow you off your socks. Alien sounds the most impressive of all the four original Alien movies because first, it is more action packed than the first, and second, the sound design of this movie is really unforgettable. Sounds like the motion tracker. No, no, it ain't you. They're inside, inside the perimeter. And the pulse rifle. <laughs> sounds that the alien fanbase will kill if you get it wrong in any other alien movie or video game. The sounds are that iconic, it's like the lightsaber humming sound, you can never get it wrong. The sound mix presented on this disc is very well mastered with deep bass in scenes like where Vasquez using the grenade launcher the sentry turret sequence in the director's cut of the film the power loader and so on that said very occasionally there will be some dated sound effects so overall it's really close to being demo worthy material where you want it <laughs> Bay 12, please. Alien 3 and Resurrection sound similar in quality and very good overall. It's the kind of sound mix that you would expect from a movie that's made in the 90s. There's decent bass, good use of surrounds, dialogue is crisp, 
And for those who were disappointed with the sound quality of the extended scenes for the director's cut for Alien 3, you'll be glad to know that the original actors had done some ADR work over those unfinished scenes for this Blu-ray release, so those scenes will now feel right at home when you watch the assembly cut. Both sound mixes are solid, with Alien Resurrection having a marginal edge over Alien 3, but both of the sound mix does not have that wow factor that Alien 2 had. Welcome to the USN Origa. Once again, Prometheus triumphs over the entire package as having the best audio presentation of the bunch. If you have a 7.1 setup, it will sound even better. Just take a look at the scene where Prometheus lands on LV-223. Or the sandstorm scene, which really makes good use of the surrounds. Or any of the action scenes. It is simply one of the most immersive sound mix I ever heard. Again, I cannot think of more descriptive words to tell you how good it is. Just play it and crank it up. On top of the 5 films, there are way too many special features to cover in this review. I've only managed to go through some of it. So let's start with the alternate or director's cut of the film. The Alien Director Cut is basically not that much different from the Theatrical Cut. Ridley has always said that the Theatrical Cut has always been his Director's Cut, and that the marketed Director's Cut is simply an alternate version of the film as fan service. So in my opinion, it's not much different, so maybe you can just see the Director's Cut after you've seen the Theatrical Cut, and you will still be fine. Then there's the James Cameron's Alien Special Edition Cut. Cameron has said that this is the longer version that he wanted people to see because it's slower opening build up the suspense more. Well, for me, the special edition was sort of a mixed bag. I found the extended opening a little bit too long and draggy, with a little bit too much unnecessary exposition. But I appreciated the reinstated scenes like the sentry turret sequence. So my advice is to see the theatrical cut before seeing the extended cut, as the theatrical cut provides a tighter paced action movie experience for first time viewers. Alien 3's assembly cut was not made under the supervision of David Fincher because Fincher said his director's cut will be to shoot an entirely different film altogether. So the assembly cut is made to restore the film as close to the original print as possible. Several key plot points are different in this version like the face hugger infected an ox rather than a dog in the theatrical version and their extended dialogues with the characters and so on. If I had to choose which version is better, I would say this the assembly cut because it resolves some plot holes that raises some questions in the original theatrical cut. But I would also say that the pacing of the longer assembly cut can get a little draggy at times. So again, my recommendation is to watch the original version before approaching this version. Unfortunately, as of this recording, I have yet to see the director's cut of Alien Resurrection due to time constraint and also a bit of lack of interest, but I will reserve judgement on the version until I have seen it. There's also an isolated music track on the Aliens disc, both the original score composed by James Horner and the final edited version has heard in the movie. Horner's score was heavily edited in the film and not to Horner's liking, but I actually find the final edited version to be superior at times. And if you really want to find out what happened during the troubled production of Alien 3, there's a documentary on disc 5 called Wreckage and Rage, The Making of Alien 3, now shown in its full unedited form unlike the controversial edited version on the DVD release. It's amazing to me that Fox is the number one studio in the country because they're all such a bunch of morons. So this is what the Prometheus to Alien box set looks like. It comes with a paper card cardboard cover. So let's take that off. Then let me just open this up for you. Figure out how to do this one hand. So yeah, there we go. This is the package. Then uh, this is the so for the alien one to four is is marked as uh, Wayland Yutani, and the Prometheus is marked as Wayland Corp, which is quite a cool idea. So let's look at the Wayland Yutani package. Get alien one and two, three, four, and making of enter the these five special features and these six special features. Then for the uh, in Prometheus package, you have uh, Prometheus the 3D disc. Uh, I haven't seen the 3D version yet, so it's, it's there if you want. If you, if you like the 3D version, yeah, there you go. This is the 2D Blu-ray, 
the special features. Alright, so yeah, so this is what the package looks like. It's pretty cool. Oh, and one cool feature, if you're having an alien 1 to 4 marathon, there's this feature called Disc Unbound. When you inject the disc, it will show you the Wayland Yutani logo. Then you pop your next disc in, and it will go straight to the other disc menu. It's a cool feature that will reduce the load time between discs. But unfortunately, this, since this feature was designed for the original Alien Anthology box set, it won't really work with your Prometheus disc, but it's a small complaint. So if you're an Aliens fan, why are you still watching this review? Go and grab it now! For more of my Blu-ray reviews, head over to bluejeff.blogspot.com